Hello everybody. So today I want to cover LifeMD. So really briefly, if you're new to the channel, I've covered LifeMD before. It was more than a year ago now. The business has had a lot of success and has made a lot of progress on various aspects of their platform and that deserves some new coverage. So LifeMD is a platform that provides mostly primary care type services, although they also provide some focused visits in two forms. One of them is a, a focused primary care visit plus follow-ups for GLP-1 and also for ED. They have RexMD, LifeMD operates a website called RexMD that specializes in specific ED visit. And of course, the GLP-1 doctors and the ED doctors, they're slightly different. They're trained differently. Typically, an ED doctor, you're going to have some sort of a, some, some form of a urology training. And typically, uh, GLP-1, in the case of LifeMD, your GLP-1 uh, uh, providers are trained in nutrition and they probably follow up with a nutrition the rest of the business is your regular doctors, internal medicine doctor, kind of a, the standard fare for American adults. And they cover a lot of um, more advanced issues, more, more chronic conditions. They kind of specialize in chronic conditions because they have a monthly subscription. It's $39 a month. And that's the bulk of their business. So they cover things like type 2 diabetes. They cover things like all sorts of chronic diseases where you may need to see a doctor multiple times a year. They offer that for a monthly subscription. $99 gets you unlimited fo follow-ups and unlimited doctor visits. $39 a month gets you one doctor visit per month and you can also just use the platform and pay on a per visit basis and it's $139 for a visit if you pay on a, on a per visit basis and so they focus on primary care their primary care providers they have their own platform so just like HIMSS they built their own IT platform that handles everything from patient acquisition to retention to con communication with pharmacy telehealth, right? They handle the, the, the video conference call, the video calls with the patient. Diagnostic, their platform integrates with Quest Diagnostics and LabCorp. One, one special point I wanted to make about this is that uh, both Quest and LabCorp, they have this, the, this service. I can't remember one that uh, LabCorp covers it, but the, the other one uh, uses GetLabs. This is very interesting. So these are a phlebotomist. A phlebotomist is someone who draws your blood when you, when you need to get you know, your, your, your something tested, right? You want to know how many triglycerides, cholesterol, whatever you got, you want to test that. You typically need to get your blood drawn, your, your, your blood drawn out, and it's a phlebotomist. This is GetLabs. This is fascinating. This is like an Uber for phlebotomists. $35, and the phlebotomist drives to you and draws your blood out, and it's available in a bunch of big cities, and they've partnered with that. So really, LifeMD is, is offered to provide comprehensive virtual primary care that both includes the visits and the labs by partnering with this with this local platform i i am quite impressed by the offering if you look at um their their um, their, their numbers and and the satisfaction of the customers, you can see they're always on time 99 percent now you know if you see a doctor in the real world Typically, they're not on time if you go towards the end of the day. They're going to be on time if you go at 8, yeah. But at the end of the day, it's not the case. Here, 99% of time, so very helpful for busy professional. Uh, this year, we did 1.1 million consults, 200 different conditions that LifeMD can treat. So again, many, many more conditions than HIMSS. HIMSS kind of focuses on the 80-20. LifeMD may, may focus on like the 95-5, if that makes some sense. Um very high ratings for physicians. Again, very important in the era of Amazon, in the era of customer satisfaction. You need to have a 4.9 out of 5. I guarantee you it's not the case in the physical world. It's not the case in the legacy healthcare that you get gets your providers uh, having a, having a 4.5 out of 5. 
So I listened to the entire call, it was quite fascinating. Uh, they actually process between 800 and 1,000 patients per day, and they have a team of 50 physicians who work together, who process between 800 and 1,000 visits a day, and so that would be about 20 each, which would be about right if you are MD, that would be about what you see, to about 20 patients a day. And of course, they use um, their, their own system to write the, do the doctor knows they have their own uh, ERP for healthcare, if you will, kind of like, a, 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 you know, it's kind of like Epic, but it's their own form of, of Epic, so less bloated software, just like HIMSS, right? We don't talk enough. When we, talk, when we cover these talks, we don't talk enough about the software part of the business, but these systems created their all uh, electronic health records system, and that's a, that, that's, a, that's a big part of those businesses. So very interesting stats that they shared in the presentation here that I just want to go over really quickly. One American out of three doesn't have a primary care doctor, and I can tell you my own experience um, back in the day getting, getting, a, getting a doctor, or, you know, uh, if you're healthy, they want you to see a nurse practitioner. If you really actually want to see a family doctor, yeah, you're going to have to kind of fight for yourself. And that depends on your city, of course. Some cities have plenty of doctors, but if you if you live in a in, in a more rural area, you're going to have a harder time. And, you know, the wait time, the average wait time in America, very fascinating statistic, is 20 days. That's the average wait time. I've seen I've seen many much more than that. I, I've seen situation, especially with a specialist, where it could be months. At LifeMD, it's two hours. Two hours of wait time. Well, you know, forty-eight hours would be fine, but it's two hours, so it's kind of to tell you the power of this thing. And I remember from a former call, like they were talking about how they had visits from people who don't even live in the U.S. because in their own country, sometimes they have to wait six months to see the doctor, and they can just see an American doctor within two hours thanks to these platforms. Um, again, many people say they don't go to the doctor because of the cost. With LifeMD, seeing a doctor a month is $39 a day. One time is $139. So again, the cost is less of a deterrent. Think about the gig economy. Think about how many people in the gig economy simply decide to not go for health insurance. And so in that case, it's very appealing. What well, it's... Uh, it's not even twice as twice as expensive as Netflix. It's, it's like uh, it's like eighty percent more expensive than Netflix, right? And and you get one doctor visit per month. Incredible value. When products are so much better and cheaper, they usually win. This is why I'm so bullish on Hims, and this is why I am warming up to LifeMD, and I, I am becoming bullish on this company as well. Only 8% of Americans, by the way, undergo preventative screenings, i.e. get your labs, right? Typically, you go, you go to your physical every year because you want to get the labs done and you want to make sure you, that you don't have any any issues with your blood work. There's so much stuff that you can find out by doing blood work. LifeMD allows you to do that for one thirty nine plus the cost of the labs. By the way, if you wonder how much the cost of the labs cost, actually, uh, I I'll give a kudos to, to Quest and LabCorp. These companies are, actually, are, are usually very transparent as to the cost of the labs. And, you know, I'll, I'll, give, you, I'll give you a pro tip. Have a conversation with NAI. <laughs> drag and get, ask the AI what lab you should get. Go get your labs with Quest or LabCorp. They send you a PDF, drag and drop the PDF into the AI and tell the AI to, uh, to act as a, a primary physician and tell you what's going on. That's, I think, going to be one of the... This is no health advice, by the way, no financial advice. But this is what I think, even where we are headed, is at some point you're just going to have an AI and the AI tells you which labs to get and then the AI just analyzes your labs. It's incredible the value that is going to be created. Um, of course, no health advice here. Important in the case of LifeMD because, of course, thirty-nine dollars a month. This is compelling if you have a cr if you have to go see the doctor multiple times a year. That's when it gets compelling. Well, guess what? Apparently, fifty percent. This is nuts. Apparently, fifty percent of the U.S. population has a chronic condition, and those chronic conditions mean eighty-six percent of the healthcare costs. So, essentially, health insurance is sponsoring those with a chronic disease like if you you know and so many people get health insurance and if you don't use it for 10 years you know it's kind of act as a, as a sponsoring of mostly chronic diseases you would think it sponsors 
you know, the ER visits or, or I, I, anyways, I don't want to get into the specifics, but insurance, one, te- one day it will require its own video and it won't be an investment advice video. It will be more like an industry analysis type video coming one day. Subscribe to the channel if you're interested. Anyways, this company, they've been, they've been able to, to grow fast. They are EBITDA profitable. The market will wake up to them if they actually become gap profitable, which is likely coming, I would believe, in the next year. Good for me, though. I only care about cash flow and EBITDA profitability. And we are there. This is not a company that's going bankrupt. This was not the case the first time I covered it. You may remember. It was more than a year ago. When I covered it more than a year ago, when the stock was trading at two bucks, there was more risk. There was more risk. Anyways... Let's continue. The stock right now is trading at $5.13. Okay, I'll get to the valuation in the second. Put that aside for, for a second. So let's talk about the growth. They're growing quite fast. Their goal is to grow revenue at 30%. By the way, when we talk about the revenue, they talk about, about the telehealth revenue here. Right? What is, it, what, what is the rest of the goal? They want to increase the retention of their telehealth offering. They, want just, they just want people to subscribe to, to a primary care plan. That's it. Like it's, it's the, the way to go. Um, they, they are building their brand, building the brand. They are scaling things like GLP-1, scaling things like cardiovascular health. Important to note, HIMSS, GLP-1 is great, but, but hurry up launching hormone therapy. LifeMD just launched hormone therapy with RexMD, hormone replacement therapy, which in the real world is known as testosterone. That's, that's you know, if you, if you go to a strip mall in the U.S. and you see these tacky, low, uh, it's just my, it's just my, I'm making a joke, I don't know if it's really tacky, but low T, the low T stores or the low T center, center, it's almost stereotypical American suburbia, that's HRT, that's, that's testosterone treatment, and, and these treatments are very popular, Hims leans to launch its own, RexMD launched its own, and of course, it's, the, these treatments require more follow-up with doctors, which is why LifeMD is better positioned and better able to offer it. You know, they're also working with GLP-1s. They, of course, I, I listened to the whole call. You know, you don't need to take a guess to figure out that most of the questions on the call were about GLP-1s. So I know too much about GLP-1s. LifeMD prescri- wants to prescribe branded GLP-1. And they have a lot of hope for Medicare. Medicare, there may be a review of Medicare in 2025 where GLP-1s might be covered for conditions such as well, hopefully weight loss, but that would probably cost too much money. But there's a lot of promises, as I discussed in a prior video, GLP-1s for alcohol cessation, GLP-1s apparently for Alzheimer's, believe that or not. So there's a lot of situations under which a patient could qualify for reimbursement for branded GLP-1s. And so that is their strategy, to try to go the branded GLP-1 route and try to help the patient work with their insurance to see if they qualify for a given condition, a given concern that they are trying to address. That's, that's, that's point number one. Now, I also want to talk, this is a common criticism of HIMSS. Oh, they spend all of the money on advertising. Well, LifeMD spends a little bit of money on advertising, but it is right in line with HIMSS. If you look, it is under 50%. We'll see uh, uh, at, at the end of 2024. It seems like they're going to cross that 50%. Maybe they're going to be slightly over 50%. Anyways, you can see they used to spend much more in marketing, in ad spend. They spend way less in ad spend right now. So that is also why the EBITDA is improving. This is their EBITDA for the telehealth business. The EBITDA is now 3.5 million. That's what they expect for this year. So this is a company that's EBITDA positive. In my spreadsheet, you hear the 12% EBITDA. I calculated that for the last quarter. This is my own calculation. That's what their EBITDA is at now. And hopefully, most likely, that's what their EBITDA is going to be going forward. And I want to point out, I want to finish that, finish out with this before I discuss about valuation. Let's talk about the growth. This company has been growing quite fast. You can see 119, 152. They're predicting to do 205 in 2024. So look how they spell out the growth for you, right? It's 28%, 28%. 35%, we see a little bit of a pickup of the GLP-1. Now, look at the problem here, right? Telehealth 
and work simply. What is going on? Work simply in is an is an HR documents business, right? It has nothing to do with telehealth. It has nothing to do with life MD. This company has had a lot of VCs involved, which is why, for some reason, they ended up owning a majority stake in a SaaS company that focuses on HR documentation. And it's a SaaS company who's fine in terms of cash flow, but really has no growth anymore. They did 54 million last year. They did 54 million year to date. So this is probably a company that's going 10, 15% a year for work simply. And do you think the market is confused? Do you think the market is confused when you have 54 million that comes from a SaaS HR documentation company mixed with a telehealth slash GLP-1 perhaps company? Do you think the market is confused? That's my guess. The market is very confused. And when we look at kind of the guidance, their guidance, you can see telehealth, their guiding revenue at plus 54% for the year. They're saying they're going to grow the telehealth revenue plus 54%. Work simply, they're guiding that at flat. They're saying the business is mostly stable and works simply. They've had a few headwinds, which is also why they had a deal to sell Work simply, but the, the, the business did not go through because they were not satisfied with what they were getting with Work simply. But Work simply makes seven million dollars a year of EBITDA, so they are just keeping it in the business. But this is confusing Wall Street. Make no mistake, this is confusing Wall Street because when you look at Wall Street's forward growth, it's predicting twenty nine percent forward growth. But why? Because Work simply is not growing, and the telehealth business, which is seventy five percent of the business, is growing at fifty four percent. So Work simply is a drag on revenue growth of this business. And do you think the market digs deep enough into that difference? No, it trades on headlines. The market trades on headlines. So to conclude, I have two valuations for you. I have one valuation of LifeMD with the revenue growth at 29%, which is what analysts say, with the gross margin and the EBITDA margin of this quarter. And I ask the question, how much am I paying for that growth? I'm paying a 0.04. LifeMD is the cheapest stock that I have on the channel. It is cheaper than HIMSS. HIMSS is consistently in the top 10. If you look at US stocks, HIMSS is usually the second cheapest stock I cover on the channel. LifeMD is the cheapest stock. It is trading at 0.83 times sell for a business that is mostly recurring, right? $39 a month for a primary doctor and follow-ups, for a business that is growing at 29% a year, but for a business that is also being dragged by Work Simply. Now you may ask, what if? What if Work Simply was sold? Well, Let's assume they sell work simply for $70 million. That would make sense. The business made $7 million of EBITDA. I'm assuming a very low ball valuation. I'm assuming they sell work simply for $70 million. So let's assume that. We take the $70 million of enterprise value. We, 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 we remove it from the current enterprise value. So our, our EV moves from 210 million of enterprise value to 140 million of enterprise value. And then I ask the same question, how much am I paying for that growth? No, note how I've removed the revenue. The revenue is lower by about 25% now that I've removed the 54 million. So I've lowered the revenue. I assume work simply is sold at 70 million revenues down. I kept a gross margin and I kept EBITDA margin the same. And for some silly reason, I made a mistake. It should have been 54% growth here, not 53%. 54% is their guide for the telehealth revenue. So let's assume, well, I guess we're going to use my, mix, my mistake. Let's assume the business is growing at 53% revenue over the next 12 months without work simply. We work simply gone. In that case, the business is trading at a 0 0.021. So the business is four times cheaper than HIMSS. If you assume that they get rid of work simply 
for $70 million. So I am amazed by how cheap this company should I buy? I think the answer to that question is, is yes, for me. Yes, I should buy. That's the answer to my question. And the question is, I'm going to have to do some, some, some fall cleaning and sell, sell some, some assets because, because you know, it's not good to have too many stocks in the portfolio. But should I buy? The answer to that is, is yes. I think, I think this is a cheap stock. As always, I post everything on Patreon. I post my buys on Patreon. You'll be, you'll be informed if I buy the stock. But should I buy? Answering the question of this video, should I buy? The answer is yes. I think this is a highly, highly compelling business, a cheap business, and also a safer business than when I covered it more than a year ago. It is a safer business now. <sighs> you know, they could have gone bankrupt a few years back. I, I believe they're out of the woods because of that cash flow, that EBITDA cash flow being positive. So anyways, this was not investment advice, not financial advice, just entertainment, hoping you were entertained. Please like, please subscribe. Follow me on Patreon if you like the analysis. Follow me on X. Appreciate all of the support and have a wonderful day.